You know, one of the things you'll find out that God does not do, God does not contradict himself. If he wants holiness, he is not going to act like sin. If he speaks the truth and he is truth, God will not lie. The Bible says he is not a man that he should lie. So whatever God says, you can count on it. Now, it may not turn out according to your expectations, according to your schedule, according to your timing, the way that you want things to turn out. It may not come through the run of events that you have played out in your mind. But God is faithful to do what he said he will do. He wants the same from you and me. He wants us not to contradict ourselves. Some of you need to take the Jesus emblem, the cross, the fish, all of those symbols off of your vehicles because you drive like a demon. You drive like, like you're driving a weapon of mass destruction and they better not get in your way. See, when you, <laughs> this is funny, when you represent yourself carrying the Bible, wearing the cross, wearing Christian jewelry, wearing the Christian things in your household, on your door, your doormat, your car, your job, you are in essence, <clears throat> pardon the uh, expression, advertising for God. Well, see, what the world is sick of is false advertisement. Now, I remember when I was at a place looking at these pictures on the menu, and they showed a picture of the guacamole and the chips and the salsa and the this and the that and the other. And I looked at the plate they laid in front of me, and I said, excuse me, but I just paid X amount of dollars expecting what that picture represents. I did not get that picture. I got half of what that picture offers. So I should pay half the price for what I got. Or else what you have in essence is false advertising. You know what I'm talking about, you guys. You know you don't like to be gypped. Well, see, when you look at this world, they don't want to be gypped and they don't want to be tripped. They don't want to look at you and say, man, you talking out the side of your neck. You talking about Jesus. You act more like a devil than I do. What do I need your God for? I'm already in the fix I'm in. And you look like you worse off than me. So what do I need your God for? You got to watch how you carry yourself. You got to watch. Listen to what's coming out of your mouth. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart. What's in here? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you got hatred in your mouth, your mouth, it, <laughs> I'm sorry. If you have hatred in your heart, your mouth is going to spew it. If you have bigotry in your heart, your mouth is going to spew it. If you have bitterness, your mouth is going to spew it. Input, output. You can't tell me you're a child of God when you hate your brother. Now, some of you, like I talked to somebody this afternoon, sometimes you got to avoid some of the folks in the body of Christ and some of the folks in our families. We have to avoid some people. Why? Because we're sensitive and we could get hurt easily. That's different from avoiding a person because you hate them. You may love the person. You may be concerned for their well-being and all of that. But knowing they have a dagger for a tongue, stay away, buddy. 
Because if you're not careful, Jack might jump out your box and you will misrepresent. So you stay away. It's not time for you to play. You're not ready for the game. You got to let God get you together up in here before you let what comes out of your mouth ruin the atmosphere. You got to be careful. When you are representing God, you have to look the part, dress the part, act the part, be the part. You can fake it only for so long. And guess what God will begin to do? He'll take your skirt and he'll raise it up for everybody to see and expose your filth. He'll expose your attitude. He'll tell people about you and you don't even know it. You may not even know. And God will tell somebody else how phony you are. God will tell somebody else, stay away from them. They are toxic. This is for your protection. You're not going to do them any good. They're going to do you harm. Stay away from them. You're not strong enough to handle them. You got my strength, but you're still too wounded to handle that. Leave it alone. So some of y'all stay in toxic relationships, toxic marriages, when you should have run a long time ago. And now you feel trapped. Because when God told you to go, you wouldn't do it. So you, you, you're mixing messages in your life, your standards, your activity, and your choices. And then when people see you in the pickle you're in, they're wondering, well, what happened to this all-powerful God? <laughs> you know, is he in Hawaii somewhere taking a, a, a sabbatical? What's up? But you're trying to convince me how badly I need God. Wait until, and I'm not trying to, oh Lord, I'm not trying to pick on you. Wait until you get your self established through the power of God first. We all have to come through that developmental stage. God has to tear down and rip out and strip and remove before he can replace and rebuild, restore, and heal. He has to take you through that process. So don't be so quick with the lip because some of you are not ready to witness for God yet. Some of the best you can do is say, have you thought of accepting the Lord as your savior? savior? Leave it at that. Don't say why, because you ain't got enough list of whys to convince a roach, let alone a human being. Okay. Oh, I hope you're getting this. There's so many people going down the wrong path because of people who, through their zeal, mishandle the body of Christ. The new babes in Christ, they mishandled. You ever try to crack an egg? Some of y'all trying to crack through these people's shells and you're not ready. Try to crack the egg and what do you do? The whole thing just becomes a mess in your hands. You don't just put the crack and you open it up and the egg comes out all nice and clean. No. You crack it, the thing goes all the way through and the eggs and the shells and all that. It's just a mess. Yeah, throw it away. You ain't going to pick all them shells out of there. Well, guess what? There are a lot of born-again Christians just coming to the Lord, throwing themselves away because of things we have said, things we have done, the way we did it, the enthusiasm we showed with lack of wisdom. Mm. If you can't back it up, Keep the trap shut for a while. The only thing you need to be doing is praying for them to come to the Lord. But don't open your mouth. My mother used to say this. It's not an insult, but listen. It's best for people to think 
you're dumb. Then to open your mouth and erase all doubt. Now, some of you, people think you're really walking with the Lord. You are really trying to walk with the Lord, but you're not there yet. You're trying. But then what you do is you open your mouth wide. And what do they do? They take one look at you. They're gone. No, I don't want no part of that God. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't want to be like that. Okay, I'm done. Hope you get my drift. Don't be offended. We all need to be reminded of this because we can all, I don't care how long we've been saying, if we're not operating in the wisdom of God, and we're not acknowledging him in all our ways, we can mishandle unintentionally, but we can mishandle. And sometimes God says, leave that alone. You're not going to do a good job. Back off. There you go.